I welcome back to the Revelator Show at this time, Scott Holiday from the band Rival Sons. Dude, what's going on, man? How you been? What's happening, man? Long time no talk. Yeah, man. Uh, last time you were on was uh, September 2014, and uh, we covered a lot of different things last time you were on, man, from uh, your time at the Sugar Shack, how long you've been married, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, meeting fans, facial hair, FM radio, raunchy, dirty <laughs> riffage, um, your first time in Nashville, recording in Nashville, and... My mustache does the talking. A few other things there I may be leaving out. But, what else is uh, there welcome... to talk about? We've covered all <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we covered everything, man. So uh, I just wanted to hang out a little bit, man. That's all. No. Uh, you, you guys have been, you know, no no, uh, no slowing down for you guys, man. You, I mean, obviously, the record pushing the two-year mark now. And, and I want to talk about record and stuff in a moment. But uh, you guys are currently on tour with Black Sabbath. I'm sure you're getting a lot of uh, questions about that. But uh, you guys rolled in this morning in the Nashville uh, you guys are doing a one-off here in Nashville before jumping back on the Black Sabbath run. So I, I guess we'll start there, man. You know, as far as Black Sabbath, how does that come to be, man? What's that phone call like with your your manager or label, or does the Sharon Osbourne call you and say, "Hey, let, you guys want to tour with Black Sabbath?" Essentially, that's how it went. Uh, we, the way the whole gig came around was we were playing an award show for uh, Classic Rock magazine, and uh, they they held it in L.A. Uh, for last year. Last year, I think, or the most recent one, I believe. Anyway, we we play. They asked us to do a couple songs. Sure, no problem. It's basically a uh, audience just riddled with our heroes. It's just all you know, the who's who of classic rock, really. So it's a great opportunity to play for the people you uh, cut your teeth on, basically. And uh, we played, and everybody uh, liked it enough that when we came off stage. Sharon and, and uh, Ozzy were in the front row and kind of just followed us back to the trailer and and kind of professed how much they enjoyed the show. So it was really that simple to the point of Sharon even going, we're doing this tour, you guys should do the tour, basically just on the spot. And uh, yeah, our manager was on, on spot as well. And we went, talk to that guy right there. You guys talk, because yes, we want to do that tour, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, there's no way you're saying no to that, man. Yeah, and then we got the call uh, coincidentally when we were the day we were shooting our uh, video for Electric Man on set. Our manager got the call and came down to the set and went, "This is happening. We're doing this." Wow. It was a big, big day. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's it's well deserved, man. I know you guys have been at it for a while, man. You know, record after record, tour after tour, whether it's in the states or overseas or you know or what have you. And you guys have been putting in the work, so it's good to see it. it you getting some big time payoff there, man. It's it's really gratifying. Yeah, I mean, since last time we talked, I think we've been basically nonstop touring into making another record into yeah. some more non some more of that nonstop touring stuff. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, we, we've been working really hard, and it's nice, you know. We're like at home, especially uh, radio starting to take, and we can feel radio starting to take all over the place. And they're not only playing things from Great Western Valkyrie or Head Down or Pressure and Time; they're taking them from the EP or the first record too before the fire. It's great. So radio isn't just playing a single right now for us. Where it's starting to come in is they're just going to play like four songs off of any record at any given time. So. It's kind of like a godsend that way. And um, you can feel the audience is getting um, more varied. Like, you know, for us, probably more young as a lot of older folks caught on to us first, just generally went, that's my rock and roll. So you notice, oh, look at this. We have a little bit older crowd. But as it gets uh, um, more popular and more into the mainstream, the crowd's getting much younger. And you're seeing like, you're seeing a granddad with his son with right. his son you're seeing right. three generations there everybody's into it in their own way and it, that's it's a really good thing well it's funny man you know last time you were on we were, we kind of talked about the, the state of radio and, and i think it's kind of it's swung a little bit uh since last we spoke man and it's i think really there is a, a rock and roll revival going on um uh, all over the place where I think people are just kind of tired of hearing the same. Not that there's anything wrong. I mean, I like some pop stuff and I, and, and some of it's is, is done pretty well, but you know, there's something to be said about, you know, a bare bones, you know, rock and roll. And I, I described you guys as a whiskey on the rock, shake your ass, grab the hot girl at the bar, give her a kiss on the lips music. <laughs> and, you uh, and, and if you look a little deeper, it might take you far deeper than that, but yes, I like that. I think that's fun. <laughs> that's cool. And that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm the same. I like I like all genres. You know what I mean? I'm not not really. I'm not into into negating or finding finding out what I don't like and talking about what I don't like. I'm more into talking about what what we do like. 
you know, like let's find the common ground and let's find the things that are going well instead of yeah. uh, kicking, kicking the shit that's down. You know what I mean? No, I, I'm completely with you there. Now, I got to ask, man, when this this tour starts with Black Sabbath, right? You know, the the first show, you know, you, you get all your gear, you're packed up, and like, man, this is this is happening. You know, it's kind of hitting you, and uh, you know, the curtain opens, what have you, and you know, you're like, oh my gosh, we're playing this arena in front of, you know, Black Sabbath is, is right there in front of us. You know, we're opening up for them. What what was that like for you guys as a unit and for you personally, man? Even more bizarre than you'd think because we hadn't really seen each other, the band, in like over a month. We had been on a long home trip, like holiday home trip, and it was a long stay home. We were finishing up things on the record, uh, the, the record that's going to be coming out, and just kind of in our own worlds, you know, uh, uh, people were moving and things were just getting situated and, and the holidays and all that stuff. It's just a big, crazy old thing. So we hadn't even really seen each other or were barely talked, barely just for work and flown into Omaha where the first show was. And I had talked to like my production manager and text and stuff to make sure everything was coming together as it should. But when I got there, they had even surprised me and built out the rigs even bigger. So I had these eight, you know, I had like basically eight cabinets on stage and the heads inside of a case. And I had this really arena looking rig built first time it's on the, it's on the arena stage the first time I'm seeing it. And, um, we only had a minute to really sound check. And it was the day before we flew in early the day before sound checked. Um, when we got up on stage, all the seats for their, for the, uh, black Sabbath, uh, they do like a meet and greet. And they got these chairs, like, you know, like movie style chairs with their names on the, they were in the middle of the arena. So you can just see all of their names on these chairs. And uh, we really just dove right in. So we soundtracked for maybe 30 minutes and then went back to our hotel room. And then the next day kicked it off. And it was just, um, it went really well. You know, at the first night, we got a standing ovation in Omaha. So it was really some it was a real amazing way to start the tour. I ended up spending like an hour with Tony at the end of the night in his room and kind of breaking down and asking him some questions and stuff. It was pretty uh exactly what you think it would be. I, yeah, I imagine more so. I mean, I imagine some of the stories those guys uh are able to share just, you know, being able to sit down and you know kind of bend their ear for lack of a better word there and just, you know, just talk and just, you know, get to know them. Um it, on a personal note, it's got to be pretty, pretty cool, man. And, you know, I, I did – I spent time with Tony, and he's a very down to very cool guy. We got a little into the story. It was more guitar nerdum first meeting, and we talked about our suits and stuff. We have a, a guy that has been making stuff for him for about 30 years, and he makes all the suits I have made on tour as well. And I uh, talked about uh, our common friend, Donna Harry, who plays with Deep Purple, who we were just on the road with. And – um yeah, it was really normal, amazingly. I'm thinking, oh my God, I have like mutual friends with Tony Iommi. What this is so <laughs> right. this is so weird. And um but but we did, you know, I, I, on the story tip, we just did this deep purple tour before the Sabbath tour. And uh those guys are actually in town making a record right now. And um here in Nashville. But we basically did the story thing with those cats every night and there was some seriously good story. It's just about the best I've ever heard from them. Any any of that that you can share at all uh, that that you I that think you, you, most of them are going to either a take too long or I probably should keep them keep them close. Okay, fair enough. I but, can respect I can respect that. <laughs> but but they were very very good and um, like I'm a subtle rock and roll historian. Like I've read all these books as a kid. I went through old Melody Makers and I, I read all these everybody's book that wrote a book, every band and went through tons of old magazines and Rolling Stones and kind of tried to get in the moment, you know, new musical express, all that stuff. So um, hearing these stories for me was like probably one of the more gratifying moments on tour of my life. Like, wow, this is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> You're verifying Fantastic. all these things I've been hearing and I wish I could give you more, but I'm not going to right now. You'll just have okay. to take no, my no, word for no. it. No, I'll take your word for it, man. I, I, now you mentioned obviously a new record coming out. I think sometime uh, this spring, maybe I, I think May 2016. Um, and, and all that you guys found in all this touring and everything, you guys found time to come back to Nashville and record with. I think you, you guys record with David Cobb again on this time. We do, yeah. That'll be our sixth record with Dave. Congratulations, Dave, on winning three Grammys the other night. Right, uh, yeah, man. Right on, Isabel and Stapleton is really whooping ass. 
Yeah, I mean, dude, uh, he, he was on Kimmel the other night and did this comedy bit with Jimmy Kimmel and then performed later, and he was fantastic. It just, I mean, it, you know, David, obviously, uh, his work speaks for himself I mean, on your guys' albums and countless others. You know, the list is too long to go through. But um, w- with the release, is there a, a single uh, that you can talk about? And what's the name of the album? Have you guys said a, a title yet? Well, I haven't been able to do anything. I haven't been able to say anything yet. I'm so wishing I could tell you right now, but um, they're – publicists are holding us back for a minute till it all comes out you know how that works but yeah, um yeah. it was a may release it's going to be a june release it's going to be a different record you're going to definitely still have the rival sons but it'll be uh just like any of our records you know if, if you're a fan or, and if you followed even a few of the records i'd invite anyone to go back to before the fire into the ep into pressure and time into head down into great western valkyrie and see the the evolution because we've we've really made a point to to turn some corners and do something different and kind of expand and go to go different places each record. And this one certainly does that too. Now, last time uh, we talked about, you know, guest musicians, is there any guest musicians on this new album that you can speak of? The only guest on this one would be Todd Ogenbrooks, who is our tour and keyboard player. So we kept it very, very uh, in the family this time. It was great having people out, great having uh, Ike Owens out, of course, <clears throat> rest is so and great having uh, Mike Webb from the Black Crows out on the last one. But um, this one was even, I mean, the Great Western Valkyrie, I think we had we had some extra days on it, so um, we had a little bit more time. This one was really 30 days, start to finish, write, record, mix, wrap up and get out of there. So it was pretty fast and furious. It was all in the family. Well, that's cool, man. I, I'm looking forward now. It, Obviously, you guys are doing a one-off and then jumping back on uh, the tour with Black Sabbath. Do these one-off shows kind of give you guys a chance to kind of work out some of those new songs uh, b- before you do a headlining tour? Is, that you, is, is people going to be able to hear some new stuff on these one-offs? They will do that. We're not doing that quite yet as um, I'm building a new rig for this record because I've added a few new goodies. So I'm, I'm going to be building a new pedal board, and I had to actually order a couple new guitars to accommodate some different tunings I'm using. So I'm kind of... Um, holding off until it'll be probably our next run that we'll be getting into that, but we will do that. What these runs are good for these one-off dates are really playing, you know, we'll play nearly two hours instead of 40 minutes. So it allows us to go back through a lot of songs and and feel how we want to feel like a headlining band. You know, it's great to open. We're humbled and happy to do it, but it's also very important for us to keep our, uh, our, our wheels greased, the gears greased and do these headline sets. Now, for for the guitar junkies out there, uh, what can uh, they expect to hear uh, live with with the new new material, new guitars and stuff? What, what are you what are you adding on? Um, I use uh, a little bit of baritone on this one. I use some different tunings, um, and I, I mean, I use a lot. Of, I use everything that I take on the road as well. But those are specifically the two new things that I'm that I'm uh, having built. For the new record that I don't have in my arsenal right now. Other than that, I used um, a whole bunch of tasty stuff, soon to be revealed. So many different pedals and okay. goodies. Right. And there's, there's constantly, I'm always looking for new things. And at this point in the game, we get to bring into the studio and goodies to try out. And I used a whole bunch of stuff on this record. Right on, man. Well, Scott, I appreciate cutting some time out. Now, one thing I want to ask you guys, I mean, you guys have done tours, obviously, with Black Sabbath, which we talked about, you know, Sammy Hagar, Aerosmith, Deep Purple, the list goes on and on there. You know, I've been very busy, but do you ever get a chance to kind of look back and go, wow, man, this is this run has been unbelievable. Uh, is there a, a favorite moment that sticks out to you when you look back at, at some of these tours, or have you even had a chance to even kind of take it all in? I think it's it's slowly coming back, you know, since we haven't stopped. I, I try to take none of it for granted and try to take all of it in as much as humanly possible between um, rushing home and getting as much time in with the with the family and the kids and stuff, and then rushing back out on the road and onto some another amazing tour, you know. Um, in the quiet time, I'm definitely trying to take it all in, and I feel really blessed and really, uh, really, really fortunate. I think it's hard to pick just one favorite moment. There's definitely favorite moments that happen on every tour. We've, we've been really blessed. All all these guys have been so, so kind to us, all of our heroes, and really given us, a, a, you know, a good smack on the ass and a, a reassuring us that we're on the right path wait uh scott what's your favorite suit that you like to wear on stage <laughs> i have a lot of suits 
<laughs> I, um, well, I, yeah, I figured you did, so I, I figured I, I'd, I'd put you on the spot there on that one too. Man, mm. this is basically—I I basically just get you back on the show to put you on the spot on a bunch of stuff. Really, yeah. that's really what it comes down to. Man, <laughs> I got a couple new ones just made. <clears throat> I got a couple new ones just made from uh, uh, Ray Brown, and uh, one is—it's so green and far out. I don't know if anyone's seen any pictures. If you've seen any pictures, I've only worn it a couple times, but it's like a full-blown like green suit, like bright green. Um, I like that one. I like it a lot, green and brown. And then I have another one that I'm looking at right now that I may wear this evening that is a black and blue pinstripe, like a velvet lapel and cuff. So these are my new, new, my new ones, and they're my current faves. Well, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, man, so you may want to hold the green one in maybe for I'm, a week or two. I'm going to conquer with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Scott, again, man, I appreciate your time, and I'll, I'll catch up with you guys tonight. If I catch you at the merch table or something, I'll make sure to come over and say hello. And, uh, again, I appreciate your time, man. I really do. Ryan, thanks for having me again. You know I love being here, and, yeah, let's say hi.